For many in Britain, the EU sticks in the craw. EU regulation seems absurd and intrusive. We don't like being bossed around by a bunch of bureaucrats. For the British, it seems to go against the grain. There's a huge cultural difference. I've, I've seen it for myself. When I was in government, when I went to meetings of the Council of Ministers, they thought I came from another planet. There is still in many parts of the continent a notion that the way that society should be organised is to have a class of wise, experienced, public-spirited experts who will run things in the best interests of all. Uh, the British, historically, have been deeply sceptical of this kind of approach. Britain, I think, does stand out within Europe, and one of the odd things is why they want to keep us in the club, given that they're always complaining about us. Why are British the cussed ones in Europe? Why are we so attached to our independence and freedom? Why do we take so badly to regulation? Where does it all come from? The British freed themselves from suffocating feudal regulation centuries before the Europeans. While serfdom still existed in large parts of Europe, the free British were carrying out the great commercial and industrial revolutions that gave birth to the modern world. In the 19th century, unregulated Britain was the pioneer of global free trade, workshop of the world, dominating the world economy like a leviathan. Even on the eve of the First World War, Britain was building around 60% of the world's commercial ships and owned almost half the world's cargo-carrying, ocean-going steamers. But the First World War changed everything. New ministries were set up as the government extended its control over every aspect of British life. Industry became heavily regulated. First shipping, then the collieries, railways, canals, and agriculture. The Great War is, in this as in many other respects, a great watershed in British history. During the war, there's incredibly detailed state control of a whole range of industries. By the end of the war, there's a feeling that there needs to be much more permanent regulation and control of society by the state. A company was no longer private property. It was a national asset to be directed from above. The government increasingly thought that it should plan, it should control, it should regulate. When the war was over, so was the excuse for government regulation, and many were scrapped, but not all of them, and not for long. British government sought to deliberately cartelize and control the major sectors of the British economy, basically checking the spirit of initiative uh, in innovation that had been such a dominant feature of uh, the British manufacturing sector in the 19th century. With World War II, regulation increased still further. War planning gave politicians and administrators unprecedented control over our lives. And after the war, they were unwilling to hand back their power. We won the war, so we think that governments must be pretty good, and as a result, everything is then planned. How we build houses, what the houses should look like, how they should be decorated, who should live in them, virtually every area of life, we had boards of experts working out the best way to do things. A young couple has dropped in for advice on setting up home. First, they're shown how to avoid overcrowding a room. Always allow at least 18 inches between chairs and other furniture. Everything from heavy industry down to clothes, food and children's toys were regulated. If you didn't manage a doll at Christmas, this is probably why. All restrictions on toy making have been lifted, but export has the first claim. Britain became perhaps the most state-controlled and regulated economy in Europe. The regulation of business, trade, commerce of all kinds was much, much greater than anywhere else. Regulations, price fixing, protectionism, supporting failed industries. A heavily regulated economy ordered from above, the politicians assured us, would be a screaming success. But the very opposite happened. The purpose of regulation was to end wasteful competition. But it was competition that had kept industry efficient and innovative. Nimble entrepreneurs who were rewarded for success and punished for failure were now replaced by plodding bureaucrats ticking boxes. Productivity and output plummeted. 
Shortages pushed up prices. The buying power of the average wage, five to six pounds, has shrunk at an alarming rate. But first among offenders in increasing prices was the government itself. Coal rose, affecting other industries. Electricity charges went up. Then as we get more money, everything goes up, then it? It must be this inflation they're all talking about. For ordinary British consumers, life was grim. Goods were either unavailable, unaffordable, or heavily rationed. Good news came with a sticky end to sweet rationing. For nine years, mouths had watered for this great day. And it was too much of a tummy ache for the country's economy. And soon, personal points came back.